y'all. I'm Carol Corey, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Welcome to my Creating Corner. Welcome back to those of you who've been here before. And if this is your first time joining me, if you click subscribe, you'll be able to find me again very easily. And we'll be able to play together on another day. So I'm really glad you're here. I wanted to show you this Calm and Quiet. This is the stamp set we'll be using today. So let me just go ahead and get you down to my creating table so we don't waste any more time and get right into it. Okay, are we ready? Okay, this is, this is the card that we're going to be doing using our Calm and Quiet. Now, Calm and Quiet is the host one of the two host sets in our brand new annual catalog. If you do not have a U.S. demonstrator and you need a catalog, just let me know and I'll be happy to send one to you in the mail. But um, so this is one of the two host sets. The other is a called Night Flight and it's a collection of moths and it's actually quite pretty. But I really like this set. I like how um, it's a scenery. It's a beautiful scenery. And this is the card that we're going to do. Now you notice only part of it is done. When I have a scenery card like this, sometimes it gets like, well, where do you stop coloring for the sky or for the ground? And yes, if you're using watercolors and you're water painting it, that's kind of easy to go over the whole thing, but sometimes you don't want to do it as water paint. But this would be really pretty done on the shimmery card stock. I'm not doing that today though. But it, to kind of contain where you have to color, a spotlight technique is very convenient to use. But sometimes you just don't want to worry about cutting it out or you don't have um, the right dye available or whatever. I mean, let me send you a Stampin' Up! catalog and you can get the right dies. <laughs> but sometimes it's just easier to do something that looks like the spotlight technique. Now what I did on this one is I used, um, well, on this particular one, I think I used the inside of the tear and tape for the circle. I know on this card I used the outside of a spool of ribbon and you see it's a little big but I think what is going to be perfect is to use the lid from our Stampin' Up! Um, gold leaf jug. So we're going to do this card using the lid. Now you'll notice there's no sentiments in this set. It's just so beautiful you kind of don't need any sentiments. It's nice just to make some beautiful note cards and then write on the inside, but I am going to be using sentiments. Um, along with the Common Quiet stamp set, I am going to use the Happy Birthday, the Little Happy Birthday from GoTo Greetings. I love this GoTo Greetings. It's got just a variety of fonts, a variety of sizes. Um, yeah, I, this is a great very versatile stamp set to have in your crafting closet. So we're using this little happy birthday and I'm also going to use from Charming Sentiments Wishing You Everything Wonderful. This Charming Sentiments is so cute and it comes with a coordinating set of dies that cuts out each shape for each of the little um, phrases. We're not doing that. We're just going to use this for the inside. So, what else are we going to use? We're going to use the brushed brass butterflies. We're going to use some faux sea glass. And we're going to use some self-adhesive rhinestones and some pool party ribbon. All kinds of goodies. And let me put that to the side. We're going to be using some brand new colors. Now we did just have a color refresh and you know every year we get five new in colors. So we're always rotating. There's always like ten in colors. Five rotate out, five rotate in. So they stay for two years. These are our in colors that just came this month. We've got boho blue, wild wheat, 
um, Copper Clay, Moody Mauve, and Pebbled Path. Now if you'll notice, we're going to be using the Wild Wheat Stampin' Right marker. We'll also use the Moody Mauve. And you'll see on one end, just like all of our markers, you have a thin line and a thick line. The thin line lets you know that's the point, the pen point end. The thick line lets you know it's the brush end. And if you're or while you're ordering your stamp and write markers and your um, ink pads, this is the copper clay, which is one of our new in colors. This one right here. Um, if you go ahead and get your refills, this will last you a good long time. But you know, you can refill your stamp and write markers. You just pull your little nib out and you drip it in right there. It's a lot easier than you think. So, we're going to use these two Stampin' Write markers. I'm going to put the rest of these aside. And then we're going to use several, several of my blends. I also need an old Olive Stampin' Write marker and a basic Black Stampin' Write marker. Um, okay, we've got a gray granite card base. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and give that a good crease with my bone folder. Let me put that to the side. Then we've got a pool party panel that's four and an eighth by five and three quarters. Okay. We've got DSP. Now this is the, um, oh shucks, what is the name of it? It's the By the Bay 6x6 DSP, and the Designer Series paper in here is just beautiful. I love these papers. Aren't they just gorgeous? Okay, so this is from the By the Bay 6x6. This is 4 by 5 and a quarter. Um, we do have... We are using the faux sea glass, the brass butterflies, and the where are my self adhesive sequins. I will find those. They are on my table. Okay, let me put those a little further back. Alrighty. Are you ready to get started? I've got my three basic. Ooh, what in the world happened there? Let me trim that a little well I guess that's okay when you start getting like an edge like that that lets you know it's time to change your cutting blade <laughs> so yes I'll be changing my cutting blade in just a moment so yes so I've got three pieces of basic white I have four by five and a quarter and that will go on the inside then I've got um, one and a half by three and that is for my sentiment to go on the front on this one I used hello which is from the which this particular hello is from ranunculus romance and inside was um, a very pretty happy birthday and it's the little things that make life great um, I believe that one was from uh, friend Florence or common camellia whatever not using those today <laughs> so and those were from discontinued so we're going to just continue on with this and then I so this is one and a half by three I'll have all the measurements written below and then we also have three and an eighth by four and a quarter now this is what your um, main picture is going to be drawn on I'm going to go ahead and stamp that first so I can make sure that it's drying. Now I've got black memento ink and whichever is bigger. If the stamp is bigger it's on the table and you run your ink pad over it. But if it was a tiny stamp then I would have my ink pad on the table and run my stamp. Okay. So there we go. Line that up straight and Now I guess best practice is to leave it sitting there for just a 
second or so to make sure that your cardstock absorbs all the ink. You can rub it nicely. This is a Stampin' Up! acrylic block size F, I believe. Mm, no, this is size E. But it's so easy. You know you're not going to drop it because you've got little grips in there. I love it. Okay. So there, I've got it stamped, and it's just a perfect impression. But I'm going to set this aside to make sure that it dries completely. Because when you're using your Stampin' Right markers, these are um, like a more of a permanent. I don't know if it's um, I don't I don't know what to call the ink that these are from, but you really need to use stays on ink if you are using your Stampin' Write markers because using the black memento like I just used, it can make your ink run. I use the Memento and not the Stazon because when you're using your blends, which are oil-based markers, these need the water-based ink. So, because I'm going to be doing more with the blends, I'm using the water-based ink. And just be very careful with the regular markers. <laughs> okay, let me take this one out of the way. While the other dries, I'm going to go ahead and get my sentiment, my happy birthday sentiment. And with my pool party ink, I will stamp happy birthday on it. Now, this is going to be cut, whoopsie, with the tailor-made tags. Let me show you the tailor-made tag set of the guys real quick. <clears throat> Here are the tailor-made tags. Aren't they fabulous? So um, we're going to use this one. And when it cuts it, it cuts it with a little hole in it. And then you can even um, cut out the little circles that would go around the hole. I'm not worried about that today, but what I've done is I have already cut my sentiment. So there I've got my happy birthday cut already, so I'll just set that one to the side. I'll set that to the side. This is my inside. That is really not good. Let me cut this real quick. I'll be right back. I just want to make sure that that is... There we go. Used my old... I grabbed my old Stampin' Up! Um, paper trimmer because apparently I need to change the blade in my new one. So here we go. So this is a um, landscape card, so make sure that when you're doing your stamping on the inside, you don't do it upside down. On the inside, I'm going to be taking just this seagrass with the little water birds, and in copper clay, See, just tap it like three times, and I am going to stamp it off once. Actually, tap, 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 stamp it off lightly, and then put it on there. If you stamp it off lightly, it's going to be a little bit lighter when you stamp it on the card itself. And quite honestly, when I'm stamping something on the inside, I generally like to have it stamped off. I like to do it a little lighter. Okay. Now it's time for the sentiment. I'm going to do the sentiment in Pool Party. If I 
back and grab my pool party here. Now, I am using this sentiment, wishing you everything wonderful, from my Charming Sentiments set. This is a photopolymer. As you can see, it's different from the red rubber. The red rubber has got a little bit of padding in there, right? You see that? The photopolymer doesn't. Now, I like photopolymer because you can see exactly where your stamp is going, but it's nice to have a little bit of give under it. Some people might use a catalog. Um, this Stampin' Up pad, you can get these in the catalog. Um, these are great, this piercing pad. This works well. It just lets you get, sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes you really do get a better impression when you do have a little bit of padding under your stamp set. Now notice the pad is bigger than the stamp set, so this time I have the stamp pad on the table and I'm going to be holding the stamp itself. When I did the scenery, it was the other way around, remember? So tap, 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 tap. And wishing you everything wonderful. Now I'm not pushing in with all my might. I'm just kind of sitting it there so that it absorbs into the cardstock. And there you go. And actually, I let it sit there a little longer than I really needed to, but I do have a beautiful impression now. There we go. So that's going to go on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the inside. I like using my multi-purpose glue, liquid glue. If you don't get it in quite right, it does give you a minute to move it. A minute to move it sounds like a game show. A minute to move it. Okay. So there, it's on the end. So that's good. Now, I'm going to take my designer series paper and my pool party panel and I'm going to attach my paper to the panel oh, and the back of the paper has the swirly fish on it. Sometimes when you're looking at some of these papers that Stampin' Up! has it's just such a stressful choice which side do you want to use? But Thankfully this set this 6x6 six by, six by the Bay set comes with so many sheets. It comes with several sheets of each design. So you really don't have to drive yourself too crazy making a choice. <clears throat> okay. Now, before I attach this to my card front, oh, that's why it's fitting. Okay. Let me trim this a little bit. This pool party panel is supposed to be four and an eighth by five and three quarters, and it's not. Let me just trim it down just a tad bit. Oh, golly. Must have grabbed the wrong panel. That's okay. Easy enough. There we go. Now, because I did it so close, Look, it's got just the barest edging of color, 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 which is what I wanted. Okay. Now, I've got a six-inch piece. It's about six inches. I love this grid paper because you've got your inches along here. On the other side is metric, but we use imperial here in the States. Okay, this particular one is eight inches. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of tear and tape. Put a strip there, strip there. Tear and tape, you don't need any scissors. It's called tear and tape for a reason. Okay. And let me just get this ribbon down. There 
There we go. So now I've got this edge of ribbon. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my card base. Again, I'm just using my wet all-purpose liquid glue. Putting a little extra where the ribbon is. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Now, remember, I have this sitting over to the side. Because I'm using stamp and write markers, and this is really not the correct ink to use, so I wanted to make sure that it was completely dry and won't smear. Now, that's still a little on the smeary side. Let's kind of do that, make sure it's okay. Okay, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. Might be a little loud. I just re-inked my ink pad like two days ago, and I might have put just a wee bit too much on there. That's why it's taking so long for some of this to dry. Okay, now... I'm going to take the pen side of my marker and I'm going to try to decide, okay, I'm going to have this part colored. This way, if I just have a certain portion that I have to color in, then I'll be much better at coloring than if I had to paint the whole thing. That's something I would just go ahead and have to watercolor, so I made sure to get from side to side. But I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do this fake spotlight idea, because I don't feel like cutting it either. You know, with the spotlight, you would cut out, and then you would put it on a piece of, like, black, for example. Um, card stock and then you layer it up on top of the original picture. This is kind of the same idea but it's a lot quicker. No cutting involved. Alright, now I'm going to take my old olive marker, stamp and write marker, with the thin end I'm going to carefully, because I don't want to really smear because it's the wrong ink, get some of these cattails a little bit with the old olive, just add a little color into it. I'm only coloring inside the circle. Yes, inside the circle. Kind of makes it even quicker when you're only worried about inside the circle. Now my, oh, where's the Cajun? Okay. Um, I need my copper clay also, my copper clay, which is like one of the new in colors, to do the top of the cattail. There we go. Okay. Now there is a little bit of rock there, and we've got the ducks. I'm going to get my daffodil delight. And color the ducks. There we have a dark yellow one. And use the bright yellow for the other. Especially since one's head is kind of in front of the other one's body. That way you make sure you see them. Okay. Um, now, for the trees, for the leaves. I'm going to take Granny Apple Green. I'm going to start out with my light. I'm going to use the brush end. I'm not going to brush. I'm just going to tap. I'm just going to tap because when you're... I want it to look like everything's dappled with the sun coming through it. So by just tap, 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 tapping 
It's going to leave some clear spaces. You'll see. You'll see. Just hang in there with me. Hang in there with me. Okay, tap, tap, tapped. Now I'm going to get the dark blend. You know, our blends come in pairs. you got the light and the dark because they kind of blend in together. Being alcohol-based, the ink will run into each other a little bit, and so kind of blends nicely. And I'm just tapping again, tapping very lightly. it's a lot quicker than trying to carefully do everything. Now I'm going to go back with the light and that will help blend it. Adds a little bit more depth of color. See how it's making it look a little bit dappily and there we go. Now I'll take my gray granite. I'm going to take the dark and highlight the rocks. And fill it in with the light gray granite blends. There's another one. Okay. And, oh, I'm going to use my old olive, just to kind of highlight the grass over here, and that, okay. I'm going to grab my, oh, what happened to my copper clay? Oh, tell you what, I'm just going to grab my pebbled path. Let's see how that looks to color in this little bank right here. Color in the bank. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Balmy blue. I'm going to use the light balmy blue. And there's my sky. Get a little bit of dark in there, the shadowing in within the trees. Okay. You know what? Let me this. Okay. All right. And my pool party blends. I'm going to start with my dark and I'm going to highlight all my little water ripples. Remember, stay inside the circle that you drew. There we go. Now I'll get my light and smooth it out. Actually, down in here would be a little bit darker, I'm sure. Down among the cattails. All right. Now just using my blend, I'll pull the color up, blend it. love this stamp set. Like I say, this is a host stamp set. Especially when the new catalog comes out, you make out your wish list and you're planning out your birthday cards and it's like so exciting. Or when, you know, for Christmas, 
when that fall catalog comes out. And a lot of times you end up with an order that's $150 or more. Or get a couple friends together. Actually, if you want to message me, I can even do a, um, a Zoom class if you're not in my town. But um, get a couple friends together, get a couple orders together. $150 order. And you qualify as a party. And that means you can purchase the host gifts, the host stamp sets, rather. Um, they're $14. There's two of them. But only hosts can purchase one and for each additional item that you're purchasing over the hundred fifty dollars you get ten percent of your total like say you have a hundred sixty dollar order you'll get sixteen dollars off your next thing so actually if you have a hundred sixty dollar order you'll get sixteen dollars off of something means you can get this host set for free and then you, you still have two dollars to spend on something. So, Stampin' Up! treats you right. Okay, so there we go. I've got that. Now for the beach chair, for the chair. I'm going to start out with the Moody Mauve to color in this cup. The coffee cup. Going to be Moody Mauve. And we're going to have a wild wheat. All right. Like I say, these are all our new in colors, a couple of our new in colors, the Moody Mauve and this wild wheat. Now, coloring the chair in with the wild wheat stamp and write marker, I have to be careful because this is not the stays on ink. So I have to be kind of careful that I don't smear it. Hopefully this black memento is thoroughly dry and going to cooperate. But well, we're just not going to push it. There we go. This technique is really my favorite when using scenery. I like to color, but when it's a really involved picture, sometimes I just kind of get lost. <laughs> it's like, oh no, what am I supposed to be doing here? Okay. There we go. Uh-oh, I think that is actually the water. Um, let me take some of this eraser. This is the color thing because I just put like some of my color in the wrong spot, so I'm going to push it and see if I can't get it off. Okay, that kind of moved it a little bit. I'll get some of this across there. There we go. Perfect. That's good. Alright, and now docks sometimes get that silvery color. I'm going to use the gray granite. I'm going to start out with the dark and kind of like outline it and hit all these little crosshatch marks and scratch marks and shadowing and all that good stuff. Try to stay within, within the lines. Okay. Here we go. And there my dock's finished. Um, I think I need a little bit of, of lake 
water. Over in that corner. Okay. There we go. And a little corner right there. There we go. Yay! Isn't that pretty? Okay, now I'm going to um, cut the corners. I'm going to round the corners off. This is an old corner rounder from Stampin' Up. The one now is really cool and it does three things at once. So, oh well, mine is, it works. I'm sure y'all might have something. I'll have our new one down below. It makes three different really pretty decorative edges. Um, my, okay. Now let me get my card base back here. I'm going to use some dimensionals. And of course we have one on each corner. I'm going to put one in the middle. Maybe a couple more just to add. Take the little wax paper peel off. This card is really coming together rather quickly, isn't it? Now I'm going to center this in between the ribbon and the edge. There we go. I don't like putting my hands down on the fresh ink necessarily. Okay, now the um, Happy birthday label. Okay, I think I'll put it right about there. Now this is on dimensionals. So if I put a dimensional right behind here, it'll raise it up where this will cover on the card. And, but it'll be flat, it'll be straight. You'll see what I mean. go. So it's the same level as the card. And you know what I think I might do? I'm going to put a glue dot, I think. Yes, I'm going to put a glue dot behind the ribbon. Let's see if I can get a glue dot behind the ribbon. Okay, these are the these are glue dots left over from a paper pumpkin kit. Paper pumpkin kits always give you so much material. But you can get the roll of mini glue dots. So let me just grab one of these. Be very easy to grab and stick behind the ribbon just for a little extra stability. There we go. Oh, shucks. There we go. There we go. Okay. And now to finish off the happy birthday, I need a bow. So let me just. Make a pretty bow real quick with my pool party organdy ribbon. Oops, that was a mess. This is why I just wrapped it around and and attached it as as was instead of wrapping and doing my bow because I knew I wanted my bow on the top of the tag. Those tailor-made tags are so cute, those little labels. Okay, well that's a nice looking little bow right there. Isn't that cute? Okay. There we go. I think I'll give that a little bit of a angle. Okay. And we'll get another glue dot. That hole lets the um, dimensional kind of poke through, and that really might have been enough, but just in case. There we go. A nice fluffy bow. Ta-da! And there we have it. Happy birthday! Wishing you everything wonderful. Almost done!
let's go ahead and of course when you're in this outside at the lake and it's beautiful and it's a sunny day you've got the sun glinting off the water so we're going to get a couple of these self-adhesive sequins to get some glint down there might even remind some people of um, like dragonflies jumping around or mayflies oh and of course I love the brushed brass butterflies so let's go ahead and stick a butterfly in the cattails okay and uh, yes more is more so these are the faux sea glass shapes I'm going to use some of these um, pretty here we go, put one there, let's get a yellowy one up here, let's put it right there, let's put another one right around there, there we go, alright, actually I'm going to take that one off and let me put another green one, I think that might look better. The pool party color right there. There, now that's done. Let's know, let's let's switch it. Silly me. I should like have my design in my head. Yes. Okay, the two pool party colors up top and the yellowish one down below. Oh, I love it. I love it. And look how quick and simple it was. And isn't that just pretty? That's just a beautiful card, isn't it? Okay, so, happy birthday. Wishing you everything wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you like my card. If you do, I'd really, really appreciate a thumbs up on my video. And I do hope you subscribed and hit that notification bell so you join me again. And I'll have everything you need written down below. And as I said, if you do not have a U.S. demonstrator, I'd be more than happy to help you with all of your stamping and scrapbooking needs. Thank you so much. Until next time, keep making the world a beautiful place. Bye!